Professor Turner, uh, you have, as I've mentioned before, when you've been on this program with me before, you know, you've got a lot of intelligence and national security background from your time in the Marine Corps to working at the Pentagon to, you know, being the communications director for the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. So I want to ask you specifically about the Mar-a-Lago documents. There were a number of designations, um, and I guess I think you call them handling instructions. When you look at some of these documents, there are some abbreviations on there, things like HSA or HSC or uh, no form. Um, there, So let, step us through what some of these designations mean, and I'll just start with I think, let me get them correct. The first one was HSC. What does that mean? Right, JJ. Well, thanks for, for having me on. Um, the the uh, first one is a HCS. That is a, uh, that means human intelligence control. Uh, and basically what we're talking about here is this is a special classified handling instruction for intelligence that's received from a human source or intelligence is obtained by covert human intelligence case officers. These could be, could be individuals working anywhere around the globe. This kind of information is so sensitive because it is linked directly to a person who's operating in the shadows. And so when I saw that there were documents that were HCS, understanding that we, we, all, we already knew that there were top secret documents, but HCS was particularly uh, uh, you know, interesting to me because Again, uh, you, you know, we're talking about a real person, and if people get access to that information who should not access to that information, then we're talking about the potential that lives could be at risk. So HCS, human control system, very sensitive, uh, raises some serious questions about why that information was in an unsecure location. Okay. Then there's a, another designation, ORCON. What, what does that mean? Sure, sure. ORCON stands for Originator Control. And what this is, is this is information that gives the office that classified that information control over how that information is disseminated. Uh, oftentimes, you will have information that may be collected for, for, for by, the, by the National Security Agency, for example. That would be signals intelligence information. And so when it comes to sharing that information, even within the intelligence community, the way that that information was obtained could be so sensitive that you would not want even intelligence officials or the top secret security clearance who work at, say, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, for example, or who work at any of the other agencies, you would not want that information being passed around, even among people with the highest security uh, clearances, because dissemination of that information could potentially uh, uh, impact our ability to continue to collect that information. So that's that that keeps the control with the originator of that information. There was another designation as well, NOFORN, N-O-F-O-R-N. What does that mean? Right. Well, pretty straightforward here. You know, we have a lot of partners that we share intelligence with around the globe. And uh, th those relationships are critical to our ability to really understand what our adversaries are doing. But sometimes there is intelligence that is so sensitive because it may have been uh, intelligence that was uh, uh, shared by someone who is outside of that, that uh, umbrella of partners, or it may be intelligence that was uh, collected uh, in, in ways that we don't want to, to, to share. And so what we do is we mark those documents no foreign. And at its very basic level, it means don't share this information with any foreign governments because sharing this information with a foreign government might reveal too much about how that information was collected. So when you look at these designations, these handling instructions on these documents, because I'm sure everybody in the press and so many other people have seen um, these documents that were redacted and released last week, they've seen this these designations, these handling instructions, at least what we were able to see. What jumped out at you? What was your first thought when you saw these instructions? Well, you know, I had a couple of thoughts, and let me just walk you through a few of them. First of all, it, it was it's really important to, for people to think about the sheer volume of documents. When I saw that there were 184 documents that were uh, in, in at Mar-a-Lago, the immediate thing I thought, JJ, is, is, you know, I've spent my entire career surrounded by classified information, working in SCIFs. And I cannot think of a single instance 
in which I or which or, or other people around me who had access to classified information had dozens and dozens of classified documents laying around ready to be you know, the, boxed up and taken someplace. Our standard procedure was to review a classified document. I may have had a need to hold on to that classified document for a couple of days, but when you grow up in that environment, what you really want more than anything is to be able to put that document in a burn bag so that it can be taken and dealt with appropriately. So that really jumped out at me. And, and I think, you know, one of two things had to have happened here. Either someone printed out a bunch of documents there at the end of the, the previous administration to take with them, or uh, at some point throughout over the course of time, someone was putting documents aside because they had some intent with regard to moving those documents off site. So, so that's that's the first thing that I, that I say jumped out at me. But the sheer volume is is really startling. We knew that there were top secret uh, documents there at, at Mar-a-Lago. What we did not know was the nature of those documents with regards to the content. So when I saw these these handling instructions, what that told me is that these were not your sort of uh, documents that something like uh, the, the president's uh, impeachment hearings or the Mueller program, anything like that. These are documents that are related to our national defense. These are much bigger than what was happening here in the United States. And so that tells me that um, it's really important that we get to the bottom of why those documents were taken. So that's the big question for you was why? The big question is why, and and I I will I will tell you that that uh, I I think that the FBI has got to look very close at uh, surveillance videos so that we understand who was coming and going from Mar-a-Lago while these documents were in an unsecure location. If I'm part of this investigation, I want to I want to I want to collect every uh, uh, digital uh, device that's there at that location because I want to know if copies of these documents were made. Um, I, I want to review these documents to understand whether or not there are indi any indications into, uh, of, of how they were handled or who handled these documents, because this is the kind of information that's going to get to that fundamental question of why. Now, I, I've been very careful, and I think this is important. We, we need not speculate as to what the intent was here, but every day we get a little bit closer to understanding why these documents were taken. And a big part of understanding that is just looking at the nature of the documents. We've got to get to the bottom of that. And finally, I'll ask, um, just thinking about your experience, you've told us you've never seen this collection or a collection of classified documents like this outside of a skiff, or I'm not even sure, you know, throughout the course of your life, if you've ever seen this many at one point at one time. I don't know, but um, seeing this many in one place, one time, and it's been years, I think, uh, since they've been out of, away from their home, um, give us a sense of just how serious of a problem this could be for the intelligence community in the U.S. Yeah, well, well I'll tell you, I'm really pleased to hear that Avril Haines, the, the Director of National Intelligence, is doing an intelligence, a damage assessment here. Uh, what we What we could be looking at on the low end, is, is simply a situation where documents that were highly classified, highly sensitive were taken, and they weren't shared with anyone, and no one had access to those documents. And so those programs, those people, those real people, again, we're talking about HCS, those real people, uh, you know, perhaps it is the case that they are not in danger and those programs are not in danger because they, they you know, no one saw these documents. That's the best case scenario. But based on the condition of these documents coming out and the suggestion that they were intermingled with other documents and that they were in, in sort of all over the place, uh, the, the real threat here is that we have open vulnerabilities. We have vulnerabilities in the intelligence community that could potentially uh, lead to loss of intelligence sources or disruption to ongoing intelligence operations. We dealt with this, JJ. You and I, uh, you know, you know we, we spent a lot of time talking during the Edward Snowden years we know how dangerous this could be for the intelligence community. Absolutely, it is. So we must wait and watch and see what happens. Sean Turner, thank you so much for your expertise today. Thanks, JJ.